so I have uh, several big Arduino projects lying around somewhere in my computer. And these have uh, typically long lines of INO sketch files. And every time I go back to these projects to add a feature or even debug, it is such a challenge. And uh, well, let me show you what I mean. So this is an example of a sketch file firmware.ino that I created about a year ago. And if you look at the lines of code, it has more than 500 lines. And it is trying to do a lot of things. Uh, for example, it's doing some memory management, starting up the Wi-Fi or even a web server, configuring the multicast DNS, some timer libraries, math libraries, and reading a sense of value. And if you scroll down, you can see lots of global variables and a lot of uh, hash defines. And finally, at line number 68, the void setup function starts. And if we scroll down further, at line 129, the loop function starts. And of course, after that, I have lots of small functions. Seriously, this file is such a pain to debug or add a tiny feature. So I'm very excited uh, for today's video. I will be sharing six incremental steps that we can take to make these kind of code base much more manageable and maintainable. So for this example, I will be using this uh, tiny board. This is the Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense board. And I chose this board because it has several sensors uh, that we can play with and integrate in our code base. Now, specifically, we will be using the IMU sensor with LSM 90S1 and also the temperature and humidity sensor, which is HTS221. We will also use the Arduino CLI instead of the Arduino IDE. I was using the version 0.11.0, but with a simple brew update and brew upgrade Arduino CLI, I installed the latest version as of now, which is 0.14.0. So before we dive into the six incremental steps, let's create the code base with just two features features that we can work with. So here in my desktop, I have a completely empty folder, which is called main, and I'll create a file called main.ino. So as we saw, uh, one of the sensors on the Arduino board that I'm using is this HTS221. And I will be using the simplest example, which is reading the temperature and the humidity sensor. So let me copy this example and I will go to my text editor, really any text editor, because I'll be using the Arduino CLI and I'll paste it. Just make a little bit of changes. So I will not uh, do an infinite while loop because I will be integrating another uh, sensor here. So let's Let's try to integrate the second sensor, which is the accelerometer LSM 90 S1. So here in order to integrate, we have to do it step by step. So let's include the library first. So I'm going to go right at the top and include that. And in the setup function, the serial initialization is already done, but I am going to include the IMU initialization. So after the sensor, I'm going to include the IMU. And once again, I'm going to remove the infinite while loop and I'm going to ignore these serial prints and come to the loop function where it is actually reading the X, Y, and Z axis of the IMU. So I'm going to copy exactly the same thing. And inside my loop, after reading the temperature and humidity sensor, I'm going to paste the code for the IMU. So before we go to the next step, let's create functions so that it's easier to abstract them. So after the loop, I will simply create a bunch of functions. Let's create init sensor. And inside here, it will simply return hts.begin. So now I'm I can come back here and simply say init sensor. I'll do the same thing with IMU. I'll say init IMU and it will do the same thing. It will return a Boolean value and say init sensor and it will simply return IMU.begin. Sorry, this should be init IMU. All right, so looks like the setup function is done. Let's go to the loop function and over here, let's create a function that will simply return void and say get sensor values. And here we will pass in a pointer 
temperature value, humidity value. And so what I'll do is I'll simply copy this. And of course here, I will not initialize this and I'll say value. Of course, these will be pointers too. So all I can do in the next step, I don't have to call these functions. Instead, I'll say get sensor value and then say ampersand temperature and ampersand humidity. Right, so I'll do something very, very similar to the IMU as well. So void get IMU values and same thing, float x value, float pointer y value, float pointer z value. And in this case, now I can copy the entire thing and put it right here. But of course, these will be pointers. Okay, I think it's better to have a bool function. So I'll say bool and then return true. If not, return false. Right, so here simply what I can do is get IMU values and I can pass in the X, Y and Z. All right, so this is how simple it is. And now we will work on compiling and uploading it. So with Arduino CLI, we can first list the boards that are connected to my computer. As you can see, fully qualified board name. I have the Arduino Nano 33 BLE already listed, and I also have the port here. So along with my main.ino file, I will create a make file so that I can flash in these commands and also compile them. So let me paste a bunch of code. So as you can see, the board is what I got from the command line as well as the port. I will also include uh, some lint command and this is the compile command that I will be using. It will compile according to the board which is the Arduino Embed Nano 33 BLE into an output directory called build and then finally it will also try to upload it to the microcontroller and finally at the end of it it will also run clean to remove the build folder. So this is how my folder structure looks like right now. It is simply main and make file. So why don't I simply run make? It will do the linting here and then it will also do the compiling. All right, looks there is something an error in line number 18. Ah, yes, of course, I have an extra bracket. And let's try to compile and flash again. And immediately we will see that the library is not available. And that brings us to the first step of organizing big Arduino codes, which is using the Arduino library in a proper way. And this will also ensure that we don't accumulate long code base by downloading the library and the dependencies and make sure that they compile. The first thing to note about Arduino libraries is the location. It is typically residing under documents, Arduino, and then libraries. So let me see how many libraries I have. Seems like I already have plenty of libraries. Sometimes there are also instructions on how to install these libraries. For example, I am using the tbeam lilico and here they will say copy all the folders of libdebs directory into the Arduino libraries folder. So let's have a look at libdebs here. And these are basically all the libraries that we need if we want to work with the tbeam. But let's have a look at one of these dependencies, say Laura. And inside here, we will see several files, but let's zoom into this file called library.properties. And inside here, we will find find the specification of each of the library. For example, the name, the version, the author, also the URL where the repository is uploaded. So it will be good to know what exactly these library properties mean, even if we are not writing a library. And for this, I like to refer to the Arduino CLI documentation on library specification. And if we go to the paragraph on library metadata, the library properties file format, this is exactly where we will find the definitions of each of these properties. So I'm going to do something very similar. Since I do not have this library installed, why don't I search for it. So inside Arduino CLI command, I can do a simple lib search. All right, so seems like there are a lot of them and I can't really read the name of it at a glance. So I'm just going to grab them. And yep, there are so many of them. So I am going to choose the Arduino one. And the way we install it is Arduino CLI lib and simply install the name. And yep, I am now installing this version. So why don't I go ahead and run the make command and seems like now I have the second library that is not installed. So I'm gonna do a quick search once again, lib search. And yep, there is one and only library. So let me install it and let me finally try to compile and hope everything works fine. Compile has passed and now it is trying to upload it 
to the port and the FQBN board name. And yep, it's all good and it is passed. So why don't we try to use the serial monitor? And yep, I am having the IMU values. Let me move around the IMU to have a little bit of different uh, values from the IMU. The temperature is about 28 and the humidity is about 70. All right, so now that our entire code base compiles, we can do the simplest task of splitting the long file into various INO sketch files by features. How does this work? We will refer to the documentation sketch build process. And here inside the paragraph pre-processing, we will see that all INO files in the sketch folder are concatenated together, starting with the file that matches the folder name, followed by the others in the alphabetical order. Great, so it seems like we can split up the INO file. So why don't we create one new file and let's call it imu.sense.com. I know actually and here let me come all the way down and I'm gonna just copy these entire functions of IMU and go to IMU.ino and paste it there. I'm gonna create another file called sensor.ino and do something very similar. I can take out all these functions and come to sensor.ino and paste it here. So now my folder has four files. Apart from the make file, it is the main.ino, which is the same name as the parent folder. And then there is imu and sensor.ino. Let's try to compile it by running the command make. The linting is still passing. Yay, the compile has passed and now it is uploading and looks like we are successful. Now something interesting to note is if I do open this ino file in the Arduino IDE, here you will see three tabs, the main, the IMU and sensor in alphabetical order. And of course, if you want to add more files, you can click this down arrow and click new tab and let's say wifi.ino and it will be uh, appended as a new tab. So you could stop at this step of splitting the code base into multiple INO files, but the one that I prefer is to split them instead into header files. So this way we can also add on the hash include and other declarations that we might have even before the setup function. So how do we do that? Why don't we rename the IMU into simply IMU.h instead of IMU.ino. And here we can take away the hash include and also other declarations that you might have here, which we, I don't at the moment, just to cut and paste it at the header file. So I'm gonna do something very, very similar to the sensor.ino as well. I'm gonna rename it to h and then take away the hash include and put it right at the top. Well, something is definitely missing. Well, in this case, we have to now hash include imu.h in inverted commas, not angle bracket because it's not a library and dot sensor. All right, so this is looking pretty good because all my functions as well as hash include and hash define and even global variable are declared in one file. Shall we try to compile it? So currently I have four files now. Let's do a make. All right, so there is an error, include the directory. So actually I don't know why this works, but when I make it into a capitalized uh, the file name, capital sensor and capital IMU, and let me go to main.ino and also change it. Let me try to compile it again. And this compilation will pass. So please let me know if you know the reason why a lowercase does not work. And yep, upload is successful. This brings us to step number four. If our code base is even more complex and more organization is required, we can split it further into header files and source C++ files. Now, there is no technical difference between the header file and the definitions that go into the C++ file. It's more about what our project needs. So basically the declarations will go in the .h file while the detail and definitions will go in the C++ file. So let's come back to our code. This time let's add a new file called imu.cpp and here we will hash include the header file which is imu.h and let's go to the header file and we'll copy the entire function definitions and put it right here and when we come back to the header we will remove all the definitions and just put the first line as the function declaration. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the second function. So let's do the same thing with sensor.h. So I'm gonna create a new file called sensor.cpp. I'm gonna copy all the functions from here and paste it in the source file and now include sensor.h 
h. And in the header file, I'll remove the function definitions and it will be a simple two-liner with just uh, the declarations of the function. So now my folder contains more files. It will be the source file and the header file for each of the features along with the main.ino whose name is exactly the same as the parent folder. Let's try to compile and see whether it works. All right, looks like the compilation has also passed and now it's trying to upload it to the board. So let's also try to open it in the IDE. And here you will see that the tabs are automatically opened according to the source file, the header file for IMU, as well as the sensor source file and the sensor header file. The final step in organizing the code base is to use the SRC folder, which is very specific to the Arduino ecosystem. So we will be putting all these files that we created into this SRC folder. Well, how does it exactly work? Let's refer to the sketch specification documentation. And here we will see a pair paragraph on the SRC subfolder. Here they will explain that the contents of the SRC subfolder are compiled recursively. And why would you want to use that? Well, this could be useful if we don't want to expose uh, the extra sketches or the extra files to the sketch user via the IDE's interface. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to create a new folder this time and call it SRC. And inside SRC, I'm going to create IMU and one more, which is called the sensor. Now, all I have to do is move these IMU and CPP header and source files to the IMU folder. And similarly, the sensor CPP and the header file to the sensor folder. You know, one thing I'm going to do is also lowercase the names. So inside the main, now, of course, the file path has changed. So it should be src slash IMU slash IMU.h. And similarly, it will be src slash sensor slash sensor dot h. Do we need to change any other file parts? Yes, that's right. I need to add here as well as in the sensor. Okay, so this looks a lot more neater in terms of the file and folder structure, but let's see whether we can compile it. So let's run make, the lint is passing. Yay, the compilation has also passed and now it is uploading to the board. Now, when we open the sketch in the Arduino IDE, you can see that only the main tab is open. The source folder contents are basically hidden from the sketch user. So you might want to use this structure if you want to abstract away the complexity of the code. So once again, if we view the folder structure right now, ignoring the make file, we have the main.ino and then we have the source folder along with two folders inside where I have included the header file and the C++ file. I do like this structure for complex projects. So the basic file and folder structure for the code base is done. And hopefully you can see how this makes it a lot more maintainable when we want to access it in future. And I have one more final step and that is regarding the loop function and the way we handle multiple events repeatedly inside this function. Let's have a look at what we are doing inside this loop function. We are displaying the temperature and humidity every one second. But ideally, the IMU should be continuously reading the value from the sensor, but this is not happening because the delay of one second is restricting the IMU sensor value. So how can we read the IMU value continuously while reading the temperature and humidity every one second? Well, the key to doing that is using the millis function instead of the delay function. The millis function will basically return the number of milliseconds past since the Arduino board program began. So to do this, we will declare two global variables. One is called long last send time, and we can just declare it as zero for now. And the second one is simply the interval, which for us is one second. So now inside the loop, we know that we want this part of the code happening every one second. So I'm going to remove the delay and instead simply add a if statement saying if millis, which is the current timestamp, 
minus the last send time should be greater or equal to the interval. And I'm going to encompass the entire code that I want to be happening every one second inside this if statement. And of course, the last send time should be defined right before we exit. And it is simply the current timestamp in milliseconds. So now the temperature and the humidity sensor will be read every one second, whereas the IMU values will be continuously read. So let's try to compile this code. All right, my linter is failing. I guess uh, for now I can ignore it. I will go ahead and ignore it for now. And it has compiled and also it is uploading to the board. Let's see how it looks in the serial monitor. Yep, that looks uh, more correct, isn't it? The IMU values are being read continuously. So I'm going to move it around and you can see the IMU values are being read. And let me disconnect it. And here you will see every one second. Where is the temperature and humidity? Yep, the temperature and humidity are being read every one second, whereas the IMU values are being continuously read. So those were the six incremental steps on how we can tackle a large Arduino code base. I'm definitely excited to go back to my old projects and refactor them. Well, there's no shame in doing that. As they say, if you are not embarrassed at your old code, you have not learned anything new. And I have just one more thing to add. If you ever want to code a library or inject some object oriented flavor into your code, do check out writing a library for Arduino guide. Here you will see some practical examples on how to define a class along with public and private functions and variables. Basically it will lead you all the way up to how to create a library for Arduino. But you can definitely take some ideas on how to organize your own code as well. So if you have any other suggestions and improvements on how we can tackle large Arduino code base or even large embedded programs in general, do drop a comment below. If you spot any errors or mistakes, drop that below as well, along with any suggestions that you might have. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.